Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe the mechanism for the reaction between an alkene and a hydrogen halide molecule. You should then be able to describe what's meant by an electrophile and heterolytic fission. In the last video we looked at the structure of alkenes. Remember that alkenes have at least one double bond and a double bond consists of a sigma bond and a pi bond. Now both of these bonds contain a pair of electrons so the double bond in alkenes actually consists of four electrons. This means that the double bond is a region of high electron density. Now you need to understand that this region of high electron density determines how alkenes react. Alkenes react by a process called electrophilic addition and we're going to look at the reaction between alkenes and hydrogen halides. I'm showing you three hydrogen halide molecules here. We've got hydrogen chloride, hydrogen bromide, and hydrogen iodide. Now a key idea you need to understand is that halogen atoms are more electronegative than hydrogen. This means that hydrogen halide molecules have a permanent dipole and I'm showing that here. As you can see in the hydrogen halide molecules the hydrogen atom has a small positive charge and the halogen atom has a small negative charge. Okay let's look now at how hydrogen halides react with alkenes such as ethene. I'm going to show you the reaction mechanism for this and it's important that you learn it. We're going to look at hydrogen bromide but this mechanism also applies to hydrogen chloride and hydrogen iodide. Okay, first the hydrogen bromide molecule approaches the alkene. The positive hydrogen on the hydrogen bromide is attracted to the high electron density of the double bond. Scientists refer to this as an electrophile. An electrophile is any positive ion or molecule which is attracted to a region of high electron density. So in this case, the positive hydrogen atom in the hydrogen bromide is acting as an electrophile. Now the positive charge on the hydrogen atom attracts the pair of electrons in the pi bond of the alkene. This pair of electrons move towards the hydrogen atom and we use a curly arrow to show that pair of electrons moving. Now there are a couple of points that you need to learn. Firstly, remember that a covalent bond is a pair of electrons. Secondly, when you draw a curly arrow, make sure that the arrow starts exactly where the electrons are moving from and ends exactly where they're moving to. Some students are not careful when they draw the curly arrow and lose marks in the exam. So as you can see, a covalent bond is now forming towards the hydrogen atom in the hydrogen bromide. Now this presents a problem as a hydrogen atom can only have one covalent bond. So at the same time, the pair of electrons in the covalent bond between the hydrogen and bromine now move onto the bromine atom. And again, we show this as a curly arrow. When a covalent bond breaks like this, with both electrons going to one atom, scientists call this heterolytic fission. Okay, so at the end of this stage, we've got two products. Firstly, we have a positively charged intermediate molecule formed from the alkene. Scientists call this the carbocation intermediate. This contains a positively charged carbon atom. This atom is positively charged because it has lost its share of the electron pair that were in the pi bond. We've also formed a negatively charged bromide ion. This is negatively charged because both of the electrons that were in the covalent bond are now on the bromide ion. Okay, in the next stage, the electron pair on the bromide ion are attracted to the positive carbon atom in the carbocation. And again, we represent this using a curly arrow. So this electron pair now forms a covalent bond to the carbocation like this. And we formed our product, which in this case is bromoethane. Now, I just want to make a couple of points about this reaction. Firstly, if we look at the overall equation, we can see that the hydrogen bromide has added to the ethene. So this reaction is an example of electrophilic addition. Secondly, the alkene in this reaction is ethene, which is a symmetrical molecule. This means that we can only make one possible product. However, if we carry out this reaction with an asymmetric alkene, such as but1-ene, then we can make two possible products, and we're going to look at that in the next video. Mm -hmm.